I'm here at EGX 2016. I've just had about, got my hands on the bunker for the first time. I'm here with Alan, uh, the director of the game from Splendy. Um, tell us a bit about the game. It's a bit of an intro, uh, um, what it's about, where your inspirations came from for it. Sure. Uh, yeah, the bunker is a live action adventure um, thriller horror uh, set in a real life nuclear bunker. Uh, it tells the story of John, uh, who was born in the bunker on the day the bombs fell in England. And 30 years later, everyone in the bunker is dead and he's alone with only you, the lovely player, to help him through the nightmare. So I've just got down to, I think, level three, just ended level three. Um, so I got, had a bit of time to play with it. It was just starting to get a bit spooky, so I was just starting to get into the, the kind of, the feel of the mood. Um, mm. How did you find a balance between kind of, because what's quite interesting with it is it's, it's kind of a point and click adventure, mm. but it's kind of like Quantic Dream style, quick time, um, events kind of thing but yeah. how did you find the balance between those two elements because I've never played anything like this before um. yeah well um, I work with a team of writers mm -hmm. um, Steve Ince was was behind Broken Sword uh, we've got Ian Thomas and Kevin Beamers and they're all very experienced games writers mm -hmm. and so we just wanted to tell this story that really uh, draws you in as the player and really makes you feel sorry for this character because he's quite a pathetic broken soul uh, you know, he's not a um, Rambo-type Bruce Willis mm. character. Um, so he, at any point, you know, anything could go wrong and he would have no chance. So you, the player, has to sort of guide them through. Um, and so you, you, it starts off very much point and click adventure. But then as the story becomes more and more dangerous and more and more tense, so the interactions ramp up to more quick time events, button mashes and reaction-based uh, timing uh, buttons so it, it becomes a little bit more heavy rain style as the game progresses and is that something that took a lot of time to kind of like hone in and really real nail down to what at what points to you know to have that development go through the game i would say moves you so it does get faster yeah sure i mean my, my background is a screenwriter so um i'm used to writing three-act structure uh sort of scripts mm -hmm. uh where you know the game will start and you have a hook at the beginning and then, and then something will happen which pushes the whole story forward. There's you know, a turning point in the middle, you know, quite a classic kind of script structure. And this is styled like that. So as, as a writer, you can't have, you don't want to have boring sections where you know, you're just wandering around aimlessly. Um, and I've tried to apply those movie script writing, storytelling techniques to this uh, so that the player is driven forward always constantly. Uh, to try and help John and try and get to the end. Yeah, and it's one of those things that you say about him being quite a pathetic character is, is because of his mood about things and the way he's kind of interacting in the space, every click feels like it has a like a, a breath behind it. You click it, it's like, right, what's going to happen now kind of thing because yeah. he seems to have a reluctance throughout to really even leave the room at all, even mm. the fact that his mum's kind of like left in the room there. That's right. He's, he's, he's absolutely terrified of change. Uh, because he was programmed from an early age to stay in that room, yeah. never leave, stick to your routine and everything will be fine. And of course he's forced to do something out of that routine and that's when things just go from bad to worse. And is that really uh, a kind of a theme throughout? He's really kind of, it's, you constantly, whether it's a case of in danger or whether it's a case of just leaving the room to do something to try and keep yourself alive, it's always kind of, feels like you're pushing yourself and you're pushing John along. Yeah, the, the whole the theme of the story is loyalty. You know, does he um, just be loyal to his mother, but is that going to endanger his own life? And so he's, he's torn between this love of his mother and this kind of need to survive. Um, and that carries through right through the story. Um, and he even takes a little doll of his mother with him throughout the whole story to sort of give him support and push him over that those boundaries that he, he encounters. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a story of John and his mother and and can he let go of his past? What kind of moved you in that direction to not do it as, like you said, heavy rain style, just animated game style, mm. or alternatively not do it more broken age style, where it's you know, uh, animation and things like that? What took you down the, the more film route? Well, I mean, it's kind of what I know, really. I mean, we we did a, we did a hunt uh, a game called The Hunting, which was an iOS mm. game in three parts. Uh, you can still get that now, and it was a first-person zombie horror. Uh, Blair Witch style in the woods you're being attacked by zombies um, and it was all live action and it, it was just really it was fast to, to make the content um, I mean we shot everything in the bunker in 15 days which is wow. a really short film shoot 
Um, and when we've done, I mean, everything you see there was done in those 15 days, apart from one day of pickups. Um, but basically, we made the whole game in 15 days, which is super short. And then, and then we took everything, we had to grade it, you know, assemble it, make it look really seamless so that you don't notice that there's cuts. Um, and that took another six months. But um, the actual content, the characters and the location uh, were all real. And for us to try and make that game and, and CGI would have taken a lot longer. Yeah. Is that, I mean, is that something that you said about what that comes in refinements? That's what the past six months has been, is really, because mm. I mean, until you just mentioned it now, it wasn't even something that crossed my mind. It felt like clicking through a movie, so to speak, is that mm. to make it feel smooth, not like, so it's not, it's more like a smooth game story experience as opposed to like a DVD menu kind of thing. Yeah, you don't want people to be sitting there waiting on something loading like you do in a Blu-ray or a DVD. Uh, I, I was terrified of glitches between scenes. So, you know, I, some some of the stuff we had to do was uh, special effects afterwards where you, I, I would sort of animate and, and mask the scene to make it look completely seamless. But in actual reality, sometimes the drawer would, would come out a millimeter more and you would see a jump. So things like that, just little things that to me are big. Uh, I wanted it to be completely seamless so that the player wouldn't be taken out of the moment. Because um, that's the worst thing for storytelling is if they go, oh, hold on, you know. Yeah, and when you, when, um, I mean, what, was that a difficulty in terms of finding that balance between when to give the player control and when to take the control out of them and, and, more, mm. and more just show them something? Obviously, you, your classic style games have cutscenes and things like that, yeah. but... Uh, where did you find the balance between when, when did you just show them something or whether to get them to play something? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, it's all about the pacing of the story and giving the player as much interactivity as we could possibly afford to shoot during those 15 days and during the construction of the story. Um, and, and, then, and then also having a balance of pace. So, you know, you can't really have big long scenes of just walking down a corridor because uh, in a game when you're controlling a CGI character, that's fine because you're controlling the CGI character. But in a movie, if you see someone walking for you know, more than five seconds, it becomes very boring. So you, you, it was always a balance between uh, the, the actual interactivity and the storytelling. And so when can we uh, expect to see it and, and on what platforms? Okay, so it's already out now for PC and it, yeah. PS4, and it's out tomorrow for Xbox. Perfect. Well, I'll, I'll go and play right away. Right? Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. I'm here at EGX 2016. I've just had a gut to have a We're here at EGX 2016. Oh. <laughs> it's the name of the game that we're about to do, I think. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm flagging now. <laughs> so I'm here at EGX 2016. That sounded really weird. Like I said. <laughs> uh, Mitch. Mitch. Oh, good. I would have said Mark and I'd have been wrong. 